I think. I yeah. Think. yeah. I think so. Nope. I heard the one. I did, but it was real. And I think we're live this time. What is up, folks? Sorry, we had a false start there for a minute, and I knew it. I knew it. Tony didn't trick me this time. It has been several weeks in a row where he's like, oh, three, two, one, and then I have this whole big spiel, and he's like, oh, nope, no sound, or no whatever. And then I just wasted all that time. Oh, wait. All those words. Oh, shut oh, up. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's such a punk. All right. Well, guys, the long-awaited-for suspender video is here. I don't know why people have been waiting so long. They've been in suspense. <laughs> they've, been, oh. they've been suspended for the suspenders. Okay. It's great. <laughs> All the puns today. Well, and just before we get started, you guys want to hear a funny story? I do. I, I know you do. So, um, we have been using this tool for weeks now. This Barry King geometric line border stamp tool that we've been putting on everything that's on Denny suspenders that we used last week. And we've been telling you guys, go to Barry King, order from him. Here's where you can find it on his website. You know what Tony found yesterday? I saw that. We me. sell them here and we've got like 11 in stock. Um, so apparently when Kevin or Rusty probably bought this tool that they gave to Denny, he probably bought a dozen of them. <laughs> and uh, brought them back and we made a number and we put them out on retail and then we completely forgot about them. They're on retail? Well, I don't No, I think they're in a bin. I think they're in gathering. Yeah, yeah. So if you want the geometric border stamp tool that we've been using and you've just been delaying ordering it from Barry King, 11 of you lucky folks, because that's all we have in stock right now, uh, can order it on our website and I'm sure Tony's going to put a link on the thing. Or if you just go to stamping tools and specialty it's in that list of them it's like 55 bucks i think it's yeah. the same as barry king's yeah. so ha -ha! here we are <laughs> you know we sell a lot of stuff and we joke about a lot of stuff like we don't have that tool exactly <laughs> especially when it comes to barry king well and it seemed reasonable that we didn't have this because yeah. we really don't stock barry king stamping tools yeah none of his but tools to but stamp. this one we do you know barry king tools have a way of growing legs sometimes and walking off that is true, which is probably why we don't keep them on retail. All right. Um, all right, Denny. Well, you want to show okay. us how you put these strips together? Okay. Here, here is a picture. <laughs> here is a picture. <laughs> but any, I have a little pattern, set of patterns made for these. And <clears throat> you have to realize these patterns might have to be variable because sure. if you're bigger than me or a lot smaller than me, you'll need a longer strap or a shorter one. For this, for this strap, this, the front strap. Do you, do you have any like ways for people to figure that out? No. Put them on. Okay. <laughs> well, you can know. use a cloth tape measure, or maybe if you have a pair of, of fabric suspenders or full yeah. elastic suspenders, you know, you can do some measurements. Right. And then just do it like you would kind of a belt. Right. Find your find your center hole. Yeah. Find the center hole. And then. We'll tell you uh, yeah. how long is that. So from this, well, this one has. Yeah, oh, it has five. Holes. It does have five. So we're about five inches from the center hole from to the, the tip. Hole. Yeah, and they are adjustable to, yeah. to a point. You know, so you don't need to worry about it. Too much. And Tony has a beautiful downloadable pattern for your billets and your little that yoke piece. Wonderful. So that should be in the link of the description. It should be. I put it in the chats. In the All chat. The chats are All the here. chats. Oh, wherever okay. Tony put it. Look how beautiful that is. Yes, that's a very nice job, Tony. I'm, yes, you should be commended. <laughs> but, or, but we won't. Or <laughs> you should be, but we shan't. Something should happen to you. <laughs> Something should happen to you. <laughs> okay. There's, there's the pattern, so that's what we're going to do. And I have got some strips that are uh, cut to partially, so let's, let's make them exact. All right. right. now. Looks like you've used some good old wrapping paper from a roll of um, ALD bridal. Yeah, there. ALD. Any <laughs> any heavy paper I like. David this morning said, "Do you need some more paper? I saved you some." Yeah. Isn't he nice? Yeah. And it's like I could get fifty pieces of that stuff every day, but I yeah, you could. I don't. You could. Okay. Let me put our little deal over here. I'm going to cut the ends off of this thing. And 
and I'm just going to use a pointed end punch here. I believe that's the English. Yes, English. That's an English that punch. I, I do believe so, sir. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, another thing I, I have to caution you on, the pattern there, it's, uh, it's angled on one end, so you have to be sure and cut a left and a right that, for that yes. angle. If you don't, you'll have two lefts or two rights. <laughs> and that piece right there is the only piece I didn't put on the pattern because it's cut a strip and cut a tip and an angle. Yeah, this is just an inch and a quarter strip of leather and it's a, I'm, I made mine out of four to five ounce on the front, the, the actual uh, finish side. Okay. And the liner I made out of, I think, two to three ounce. Okay. Maybe three to four ounce. It, it doesn't matter in that area. I just didn't want them too heavy and bulky. So maybe we're at like eight or nine ounce total? Yeah, total. Okay. Total. We got a leather gauge. We and then check that. We do have a leather gauge, we guys. Do. Let's do check that. We Let's can't give you. Got. And then this strip is 32 inches from the very, from the very tip tip where the angle starts down to the very end. So 32 on these. You can make yours whatever you need. And then check out our new gauge. What color do we want to be? Everybody else's are color coded. We should have a color. Here, do it down. Do it on that cutting board. Oh, thanks. Right there. That's beautiful. Look at this beautiful gauge, guys. It is wonderful. Brand spanking new. Five ounce. Yeah. So we are at five ounces here on this thing. And then this is your liner piece, I'm assuming. Uh huh. And it is four ounce. Yeah. So we are right at nine ounces. Yeah, we'll have about nine ounce piece. Yep. Look how pretty. Okay. Now then, for this little medallion that goes in the back, that, that the two straps and the elastic goes to, I'm going to use a, about a, a the same leather, the same thing that I used on the front. A suspender medallion. I like it. Is that what you call it? I don't. That's what you, that's what you just called oh, it. Oh, it is. <laughs> you called it a medallion. I have been looking up ceiling medallions, which there are a plethora of, and uh, they're all very expensive. Well, they're medallions. They're medallions, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna cut this little bird out. Be nice. Don't trim off any feathers. <laughs> How's everybody doing out there today? Everybody having a great day? Is everybody done? Like, are you are you done <laughs> with your year's work? Are you finished? Are you taking a breather? Or are you still frantically attempting to finish? Because we've only got like two more days. <laughs> okay. Now this is the the outside, the finish side. Now I've also got to cut a piece out for the. Uh, I have a pencil in here. Right here, there's right a whole pencil on the wall back there. All right. If you want to use any of those. And I'm going to make this one a bit oversized because it's the liner. And I don't want to be too small. And I'm not going to be too careful when I cut it out because I'll trim it off after everything's stitched together. Is that where you want to cut towards you like that? Nah, I trust you. You haven't cut me yet. I cut myself on a pretty regular basis, but I've never been cut by you, so. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty trusting. Now, this is the part. These two little parts here are the parts that go through the elastic. And this is inch and a half elastic. If you don't have any inch and a half, or if you choose to use like a two inch, I made this part. Okay, so we've got two different size billet options. Yes. Yeah, so a two inch, inch and, inch inch and, half. and a half. Okay. Yes. And by the way, we're using these, uh, wherever I put them, these little suspender clips. And just as a quick FYI on that, uh, we frantically ordered some. We do have uh, some stock. I think we ordered like 50 of them. The number isn't done yet. So if you guys want to order them, we will have them available here probably in the next week or two. Um, for you guys to buy. So, but just be a little bit patient with us. We just got them in. We will have them. Um, so just hang tight. Yeah. And, you know, this this is kind of a modern day way to, to mm -hmm. do suspenders. If you want to be real uh, 
authentic about it, you could just use a strap with a buttonhole on each end. To That's run, right. Run through here, but no one has button on their. Nobody pants has buttonholes. Um, one of the guys in the shop, he just on his pants that he wears every day. He's got the belt on, and he just has leather tabs, um, two on the front, and then. Uh, one on the back that goes over his center yeah. belt loop and with, that a ring. Just, with a ring on it and then yeah. he just hooks the swivel snaps into those rings and he puts on his suspender. So you can do or, it pretty much all leather with some swivel snaps. Or you can do this same thing and use an inch and a half swivel snap. And then just hook it to your belt loop? Yeah, just hook it to your belt loop. There you go. Yeah. Unless you're worried about pulling your belt loops off like I did here a few weeks ago. <laughs> and I wasn't even wearing suspenders. I was just pulling my pants up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we do, I do have a piece of inch and a half elastic, so this is the size I'm going to use. All right. Well, and Denny, right before we were talking that you had this kind of pile of, of black thick elastic, but mm -hmm. it was too hefty. Yeah. It didn't have a lot of give. You want this to be comfortable because sure. the leather's not going to stretch. Yeah. And right. so finding an elastic that is this nice and, and I want to say spongy, but uh, springy. Yeah, <laughs> springy. <laughs> springy, yeah. yeah. You don't want something that's that you really got to tug on. Yeah, and we've got some more elastic, some two-inch elastic, but it's kind of too light. Okay. You know, but but I mean, uh, if you went to your local Clayton, fabric store, Clayton has, Clayton has ordered us some elastic, oh, but I don't remember if he got two and a half or one and a half or two inch. I bet it's in that email that I have. Yeah, but anyway, we're gonna do this little deal right here. And this is going to be a two-part series, you guys. We're just going to cut parts today, and, and uh, I'm going to tool the, the straps. And then Friday, we'll put everything together. Leticia checked in and said, finally made it to a live. Well, hello. Welcome. Ask us all your questions. Give us all your thoughts. Rachel Blaine says, what did the teacher say to the class clown? I don't know. What did they say to me? What did the teacher say to the class? <laughs> well, you got me. <laughs> you are suspended. You are suspended. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be a good that's one. That's a good one. If that's not the answer, um, it should be. Uh, that's what you put was the answer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, I thought that you answered it for once. Well, that's what the teacher also used to say. Well, I'm going to put those finished pieces over there so you I do don't that. get them confused. Because I'm confused most of the time. Okay, I don't think this piece is big enough for two, so I'll cut it out of this. All right, now the part we're going to cut out is this buckle shape. Buckle shape. And this is it right here. Now we're using, <clears throat> since we're using inch and a quarter straps for the front, we're going to be using an inch and a quarter buckle. But our our little clip is inch and a half. Okay. So our little buckle shape is kind of odd shaped here. And on the pattern, he's, he's make, a little curvy. Make yeah. sure that it's it's right for what you're using. The pattern's a little bit over what you have. I think if you lay your your piece on there, it's a little bit oversized. Oh. Yes, it is. Yeah, make sure you've got an uh, an inch and a half up here at this wide point and an inch a quarter. At the, at the buckle point. Right. Match this to whatever hardware it is that you're using at this location and at this location. Right. Yeah. And then kind of taper it if you need to. Yeah. But uh, you got to cut two of these. And they don't have to be a left and a right because they're both the same. Symmetry. See ya, Eric. We had somebody that already had to leave? And he was checking in at work. Mm. You saying the boss is coming, so I'm out of here. Right. <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> this looks like a really huge watch strap. It does. <laughs> okay. And you know, you guys be careful because you can have a tendency to make these too heavy. So use a lighter weight leather than than you would think you need. Yeah, we still got that four to five. Working yeah. from home, just being responsible. Oh, good job. So the boss doesn't care. The boss doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Unless no work is getting done. There were some people that were done with projects. Some that had a few more to finish up. I got a nose bank finished. 
Yeah, and you, I don't know if you want to show them those band that you did already, but it came out very nice. I'm so yeah. proud, Tony. Sure. He's so proud. I'm just happy to know you. <laughs> Uh, you got an uh, Aloha, Denny, from Hawaii. Oh, Aloha to you. Canada, what else do we have in there? There was some other stuff in there this morning. There was a new uh, Montreal, Quebec. Ooh. Wow. Where was the guy from last week? Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Yeah. Look at you go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should I've go here read the chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I need to punch a buckle slot in here. I need to get my rock back up here. I need to get my rock. Okay, rock is there. All right, the rock is home. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just using about a one inch buckle slot here. Or oblong punch or bag, bag punch. punch. Whatever you choose to call it. It's that thing that makes a slot in there. <laughs> All right. I might need this disguise on. I okay. think I can get rid of this for the time being. You're okay. playing musical surfaces today. I am. All right. First thing we've got to do here is figure out how this goes. And that's about how that goes. So, I'm going to make myself a little mark here, 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 here. So you just folded it up your slot? I've just folded it how, how this is going to be folded. See the... Where all your hardware goes. Yeah. So he folded it at those two wide portions, uh -huh. where, where he's got those flares and then the center of the, uh, the bag slot. Yeah. Now I'm just figuring out where I need to, uh, to bevel the edge right now before I put things together. Because I won't be able to Once bevel you that together, edge. You won't be beveling nothing. You'll also need to, I'm, I'm using a heel bar buckle on these, so you will also need an inch and a quarter keeper. Or if you really, you could use a center bar buckle if you wanted to. Yeah, you could. You could. I don't think Denny really likes that idea, though. Well, <laughs> it just, it, no, it really wouldn't matter. Yeah. It really wouldn't matter. A center bar buckle just seems to be kind of bulky to me. Sure. Of course, you're putting on a keeper, and that adds a little bulk. So, anyway, all I'm doing is figuring out that I see I need to bevel the edge about like that around each. And then after I get everything glued and stitched together, I'll bevel the rest of this edge. Uh, Poland, Poland this morning. And this is about a number two edge beveler. I don't, let me see your ears, Liz. You have special earrings on today? Uh, I have like They're regular ones. We can interrupt this important conversation about Liz's earrings. <laughs> hey, that? we got somebody asking what uh, about one of the Barry King tools you're using? A geometric tool, possibly? Yeah. You guys have all the tools listed in the comments? This. Yes. Well, 67 38. 67 38. All right. Hopefully they heard that. 67 38 is the item number for the tool that we were talking about. Well, there you go. Thanks, Clayton. You're welcome. Nice shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you. See you. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to cement these together. Oh no, I've got to do a little uh, skiving first. Okay, I'm going to skive all of these edges, all of these ends, just so I don't have a big lump. No lumps. Lumps are undesirable. <laughs> How do you feel about them in your mashed potatoes? I like some lump. I like oh, a lump here and there in bed on yeah. the potatoes. Gives it some texture. I don't want that have to do with leather work, but I don't know, there's a Friends episode. You just are skiving off all those ends there, Denny. <laughs> I skived a little bit of that corner off. That's all right because I want it to. 
be unobservable anyway. <laughs> right. He wants it to literally disappear. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I meant. Unobservable, disappear. I don't know. I got these I got these fun earrings at uh the one of the shows that we set up this year. And it's just this piece of metal that's been bent. So and there's like Deb's be. jewelry or something like that out of it was like Kansas City or St. Louis. I don't remember which one, but she was set up at one of the local shows that we did. Yeah, so. that camera's not going to focus on Yeah, it's, it's on, that's all right. It's on manual focus. It's a squiggly line. Otherwise, all my earrings are always the same because I do not take them out. You don't? Nope, they all stay in there. I don't think, I don't think, at least two of them I cannot, nope, I take that back. At least four of them I cannot take out on my own. <laughs> Earrings? Yeah, I have to. I have to go to the the special dude down the street and say, "Hey, I'd like to change this." Um, <laughs> can I do some surgery, please. Can I mess with this camera right quick? If you want to. Oh, Tony, I don't think that's your hair, but you do have a lot of. That's probably my daughter's hair. Long-haired people in your life. Yeah, or hair, horse hair. This morning, went out and saw the horses this morning. How they doing? They were. Stay warm overnight. That's gonna good. get warm today, so we took their blankets off. Such good, such good horse owners. Yeah. Are they in a stall or no, outside? No, they're out in pasture. Poor little things. They'll be all right. Little poor little baby. <laughs> they got their winter fuzz on, so they're good. <laughs> I have a buddy in Alabama that says, "Do you bring your horses inside in the winter?" And I was like, "No." He's like, "What? Well, why not? What? Are they gonna stay warm?" And I was like, "Yeah." They live in the outside. What happened before people started having horses? <laughs> they, they definitely didn't have, like, the coyotes coming and bringing them blankets. Coming <laughs> up with them next to the campfire. <laughs> we had a, uh, a kid named Kane playing us for some background noise. And then there was somebody else, I'm trying to find where it was, at, saying something about saddlebags. He does saddlebags, but would like to see Denny do some saddlebags. Everybody kind of does their bags a little bit different. I think I've done some saddlebags in here, haven't I? I don't know. We did that jockey pocket last week. Yeah. Just imagine that, but bigger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so Let's you skived your ends. Let's let that for a little bit. More. Glued your little billets. Oh, what are they called again? Chape? Chapes. Chapes. Buckle chapes. Buckled chapes. I don't know why I call them that. I heard someone else call them a chape, and I think that's a proper term. Can you I'm Google sure you're that? Right. <laughs> what am I googling? Buckle, Buckle chape. chape. Buckle chape. Okay. Are you waiting for me right now? To answer? Yeah, we're waiting on uh, bated breath. I think we're waiting on glue, really. To oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess we are. Okay. Now what did I do this part? Oh, I need to stamp a little bit on this part, yeah. don't I? Buckle chape. Why are we looking this up? Does, Denny's not 100% sure if he's correct. See if it's a, a word. Or <laughs> see if it's a real thing. We need to see if we're Pinocchio and the word. Buckle chape has had various meanings in English. <laughs> I think that's the one we're looking for. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. A buckle shape is a plate or a fitting connecting some buckles to their belt oh, or strap. Okay, so yeah, yeah right. I think you're correct. Good job. Okay, we're gonna stamp this little piece right here. With the what number is it, Tony? Sixty-seven dash. Let me make sure that I'm not a liar. Okay, we'll do that first. Barry King size zero half box line. Sixty-seven dash thirty-eight. If I'm gonna do it just like this one, I'm gonna go about like that. They are for pricing wise fifty-five bucks on that. Fifty-five. And Barry King sells other sizes if you're interested in different sizes, but that we just carry the one size zero apparently. Yeah, I can go look and see what Barry looks in that. All right. Barry. The king of Barry. I'm to do 
this, I'm going to start right on the inside of the tip. This is thin leather, so I'm not going to stamp this very dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> Quest for Knowledge says, is Rusty still with y'all? Oh, yeah. Some days. You, you missed him. He usually pops in every other Wednesday to give us our paychecks while we're live streaming, so that's always fun. He did help us sell some stuff a few weeks ago on our Thursday live sale. Mm -hmm. He messed up all of our prices, so that was fun. Yeah. So Barry listed his at 55, and he has sizes 0 to 4. 0 to 4. Which one is this? 0. That's what we call, we so that's call his, it. Z. We say size So zero. hopefully it's size Hopefully zero. it's actually size 0, and we're not just making stuff up. We do that a lot. You guys need to be Don't aware. tell people. You guys need to be aware of that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing we're extra good at, it's making mistakes. But you know what one thing we're also good at? Fixing them. That's right. That's right. That's why we're so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that cute little up and down. It's so adorable. It's very meandery. I do love I do love how the ends come together to that little um, like spade tip. You know what I call that? What? A frog butt. A, a frog butt. I think you've said that before. <laughs> it does because look at his little frog legs. <laughs> they go little, on forever. They've got spring. He's spring got a little frogs. bit of wibbly wobbly in his frog legs. <laughs> Hee -he, frog's butt. Uh, Did you have best? You have the best <laughs> names for things. <laughs> <laughs> I just call them like I see them. <laughs> Yes, Tony. What color antique did you antique your suspenders over there? Medium brown? I think medium brown. That's what I brought today. So we'll see if it matches. Yeah. Did you bring it today? Yes. Oh, it's in your bucket. Yes, I did. Okay. So we have got the antique gel or the vintage. I always call it antique, but it's not what they call it. It's they call the it the vintage, vintage gel. gel medium brown. I would say you could use the antique paste medium brown and be approximately approximately exactly the same <laughs> wouldn't you think yeah so use whatever you have on hand yeah. tiffany has the question of all questions when we use glue mm, the question so what we have today here folks is our van grip um it is a contact cement very, very similar to the barge and the masters that we um, sell on our website. It just happens to be that we had a guy that ran our shop for several years that was a boot maker and he preferred Van Grip. And so from that time period until now, we buy it in bulk. We buy like five gallon buckets of Van Grip and then we pour it into our containers because uh, it's just, you know, cheaper for us to manufacture that way than buying individual yeah. cans of masters and barge. Yeah. So, um, we use Van Grip. If you're local and you wanted to come in, we're happy to pour you a quart. I think that there's pricing on that. Uh, we don't offer it as like a big thing because it's a pretty hazardous chemical and we're not set up to really pour hazardous chemicals in large quantities. <laughs> we just pour hazardous <laughs> small quantities. In, in small, <laughs> and you know, we spread it out through everybody in the shop so that not everybody has to, to do that. In any case, we're gonna move on. Um, but we will if you if you're local or if you wanted to call in. Like we would, we just don't do it in bulk because we're not set up for it. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, it's the same as Masters and Barge. Like if you buy a gallon of Masters Contact Cement, it's gonna do the same thing for yeah. you. Yeah, I would say that there isn't There's any. No. You won't be able to see a difference. No. Or if you would like to use a non-solvent based adhesive, uh, the Rhenia 315, the Rhenia Aquilum 315 um, is a really good water-based contact cement alternative to a solvent based uh, that is, we've been getting a lot of really good feedback from customers and ourselves. So, What bevel were you using, Denny? A weird one. What's that? What bevel were you using? This is a... Oh, is that the... Yes. What number is it? A number three. So it's the, the number S two would w probably work well also. SLC Pro Beveler. Yeah. Number, number three. Number we have one through five. Yeah. Okay. This cement has tacked up good. Bro, so. oh, just lifted that out of my picture. 
Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Doesn't seem like she cares either. <laughs> I know what you want to do. It's this. Turn this off straight. If you wouldn't have skived that all. Oh, yeah. Walkie walkie. You wouldn't have had to worry yeah, about what? it. What? Your, your glue <laughs> okay. wasn't on the right side. <laughs> Denny, you're just refusing to be in camera here. Okay, good, because I <laughs> forgot something there. I need to cement this in now. <laughs> <laughs> good, great. <laughs> hey. Uh, no, Denny, you're fine. It's, it, we'll, it's we'll Tony, that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's... It's all Tony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a problem. Uh, are you on that one yet? Yeah, that that's what that one's good. Then I need to move. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the warning. <laughs> Rock Leatherworks says good day from Stormy Atlantic, Canada. Ooh. A fan of how that stuck together. No. Now I am. Oh, good. Uh, Angela's asking on the Rinia, it seems like it stays gummy even after several days. Has hers gone bad or something? I don't think so. So you've put it on your product and it's still gummy? You it. Is it holding the pieces together? I mean, Did you put a, enough on? It uh, honestly, I'm not 100% sure. We could ask Clayton. I think he's used it more than the rest of us. Okay. Now then, we're going to stamp this. Our medallion. Mm -hmm. um, on the elastic, I believe that we don't we sell elastic. It's black. Yeah, we have some black elastic in in two inch, I believe. An inch and a half. But uh, uh, Clayton was getting us some yeah. special elastic. Suspender elastic. We're getting some suspender Re elastic. Regulation suspender. But if you don't want to wait for us to get that in, um, you could go to your local fabric store, like if you've got a Joann's or like here we've got the, the FM store, and just find a really springy elastic and buy a yard of that and you can make. How long is your elastic? This is, I think, nine or inches or so. Uh, I stole your ruler. Okay. Uh, ten. ten. So yeah, we've got 10 inches of elastic yeah. here. But you just want one that's nice and, and springy because yeah. that's what's going to give you your give. Give you your <laughs> give. Gonna, otherwise, the leather's going to be slightly uncomfortable because it's not going to stretch. So I know we'll get to this in just a second. But Lil Fear was asking how you do your antique gel do you resist yeah uh, <laughs> well we will get to it and you are right we will get to it in a little bit here we tried to resist there was, yeah, I there was so one far. time that we didn't <laughs> resist and it made it real dark <laughs> that That's was right. on that shepherd's pouch wasn't oh, it oh yeah that mm -hmm. shepherd sheep yes I forgot to the shepherd's pie pouch. do my resist Tony, I'm not seeing elastic on our website. Okay. I've, I've scrolled through a few pages. We may not have it. No. That I, could be. I think it. it's in the catalog. I know we. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to stop talking. TJ says, I like the way you think, but I'm from Wyoming. We don't have all those fancy stores, Liz. <laughs> uh, they well, listen, I can't help you if you live in the middle of nowhere. You might have. I mean, Walmart probably sells elastic if you've got a Walmart. Yeah, you do have Walmart. 
It might be. To, it might be a little ways away. Four hundred miles, but you got a Walmart you're, somewhere. Yeah. You're probably going anyways at some point. Or you know, Amazon delivers everything these days, so you could probably find. Yeah, out there in Wyoming, I heard they bring it in on pack mules. <laughs> Send it in on an antelope. <laughs> <laughs> there was when we went when we went to the Sheridan show. I mean, apparently, you know, they're like deer out there and it's no longer exciting for you folk, but it was pretty exciting for me and Lindsay to count antelope as we drove from Cody to Sheridan. We had a good time. I told you what those ranchers out there call them. Sage goats. Sage goats. I had forgotten about that. They're oh. cute. I guess if you don't have to deal with a herd of them laying on your <laughs> property, I don't know. Do they mess things up? Do they just well, eat all your grass? They eat grass, yeah. Which you probably want for your cattle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the problem most of those guys <laughs> have. <laughs> well, you know, you can't win them all. So Angela said she put put it on a purse to stick together. Came back several days later and the pieces are still stuck together. But her needle when it goes in and out is gummy. When she's selling it. Um, I mean, Angela, when did you get it? If it was a really recent purchase, was it cold when you ordered it? Like, if or are you storing it somewhere that's not climate controlled? Because if it gets too cold, if it freezes, that can definitely affect any water-based adhesives. So you need to make sure that it's climate controlled wherever it is that it's being stored. Um, you don't want it to freeze because that will probably render it not happy. Um, so just kind of think about it. Maybe that could be the case. Otherwise, I'll have to get with Clayton because honestly, I don't know if it stays gummy. I wouldn't think that if you put it on thin enough that it, it shouldn't really yeah. be gummy. Um, Chevy guy says that like that. counting antelope was all fun and games until you hit one. Mm, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> you wish you'd have been watching for him instead of Kevin. Well, that's why we were just the passengers. <laughs> that would have been Kevin's fault. Yeah. Or Evidently, yeah. his counting was one short. <laughs> <laughs> he can probably relate to that, too. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to do a little basket stamp in between here. That looks like a Sergei tool. It is. It is. Number 262. 262. It's a turning basket. I think that's the one you made me use the other day. Is it? I think so. I made you. <laughs> <laughs> On my little shepherd sheep. It's a stupid camera. That I can't use because I forgot to still strap into it. No. And I still haven't remade it. One of these days. start carrying a knife, you know, so. I know, I don't know if I'm ready for that. That's probably why I'm <laughs> procrastinating. People might get a little frightened if I start carrying a knife. Well, you can conceal and carry. <laughs> Is that the whole point of this? Is that it's not concealed and it's out in the open so it's right, but, reachable? <laughs> but see, it's, it's, People won't know what it is. Mm, that is true. It's just a cute little leather pouch. Yeah, you can say this is just, just isn't a knife. This is just a cute little leather pouch. It's where yeah. I keep my wisdom. <laughs> or your chopsticks. Or my chops. It's a little short for chopsticks. I guess like, if I had you multiple. Make one, you, make <laughs> you have those fold-up chopsticks. A machete. <laughs> a machete sheath for your chopsticks. Yeah. How big a chopstick do you need? As big as I can get. <laughs> the biggest. Dean says, I really like the stamp. Wonder if it reminds him of a zipper. Wonder if it what? Reminds him of a zipper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Denny, have you ever tried just uh, hand cut in the basket weave, like a hand done basket weave. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you can do it. Uh, I've, I mean, I've seen a lot of people bringing it back lately of doing it more often. That was just a question I had if you'd done it. Yeah. If you'd ever done it before. I have. It just depends on how expensive you want your project to yeah. be. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Well, and and you can be so much more symmetrical with a, with a regular set stamp than you can hand cut net. Yeah, when you're doing a huge field of stuff. <laughs> you got to really be dedicated yeah. to your leather craft to hand tool all that. Yeah. And we admire those who are. I mean, Denny gets paid by the hour to tool, so he, right. could, he could do whatever. I'll do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was, when I was making saddles, you know, the ultimate has always been a, a flower stamp saddle. But okay. it's also been the most expensive because it's so time consuming. So a lot of people elect for just a basket weave. They're just a basket weave, a plain old basket weave. You're like, nah. Say, you know, so if you start hand cutting a plain old basket <laughs> weave, you know, that defeats the purpose of the... Of a plain old basket weave. Yeah. So we have uh, Leticia that said that she joined for the first time, and she asked, has yeah. anybody ever used uh, paint markers on leather before? And I said, we carry them, but even better, we have them here, so I thought... I've never used these before, and painting is not my forte. Shake, shake them up first. Oh, just shake it up. I'm going to shake it up in here. Shake, shake, shake! <laughs> shake, shake, shake! Shake your paint! Look how cute that is. Yeah. Mm, there it is. Looks good. You only did one? Oh, there's only one of them. Yeah. Sorry, just one medallion. Yeah. You're not going to tool the back of it? No. I you put your maker's mark back there. I could. You could. Okay, that should be enough. All right. Funny how you picked the green one out of that whole pack. Out of the whole pack. Isn't that cute? That actually is pretty nice. Nice job. That's all the cursive I know. Mine, I know three letters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, four. Well, that's, I guess, not really a cursive G. No, it's not. <laughs> My whole name. Well, there's more than <laughs> but you know. Alright, we'll let it dry a little bit and then maybe hit it with a canvas and see how it comes off. Okay. I probably ought to do the other one at the same time, that way I'll get them both the same. DJ said one day he'd like to come and see us and get a class four. We would love it if he did. He'll have to take that sewing class for dummies. That's what that video, Kevin and Rusty, on YouTube. Oh, yeah. You just marking you a center spot there, Denny? Yeah, this is, well, this is part of the pattern here for the meander. Oh, for your frog feet. Yeah, my frog feet. <laughs> his, his frog legs. <laughs> you putting a shadow on there now? Mm-hmm. Mm, we do have zero saying, I thought she meant the refillable kind with a felt tip. We do have the Angelus, the Angelus refillable yeah. one. There's one you can put stain in. We have some other little markers that come in some different. We have one. I have a package of the earth tone ones back there, and I use them to uh, dye edges a lot. Part. 
Or I got strapped to a line, not really a bell. You gotta start somewhere. And all these intelligible lines are where I start. <laughs> Thanks for the follow track. For the what? Charles was asking if those are paint or dye. Those are acrylic paint. Those markers Liz is using. If she just moved over a test where the medallions are, we could probably see her. Once again, I'm not gonna. Well, focus because it's on manual focus. Yeah, I got. But also, I remembered. Is the number on the back? Um, Paint markers 471 80. 499 to 999. Oh, that's not bad. Wholesale. For a whole pack? Yeah, there's 12 of them. There's 12 of them. That's less than a dollar a piece. Yeah. Dollar marker if you're paying retail. You said 10 bucks? 10 bucks if you're paying retail. Wholesale. Okay. Wholesale is 10. 999. Oh. Retail is 11.99. Oh, okay. Sorry. So a penny less. So, good deal. Yeah, this is kind of fun. I don't paint on leather too often. But when I do, I use markers. <laughs> Here. Oh! What kind of stitch grouper do you use, Denny? Asks TJ. We sell several that work really well. I've had one that I... Uh, that is a horseshoe brand that I've used for many years that I like. But uh, the main thing with a stitch group or like any other cutting tool is make sure it's sharp. It'll, it'll do a good job for you. How do you sharpen it? Uh, I use a, a, a buffing wheel and uh, Jeweler's Rouge to to keep mine buffed up sharp, but the main thing is don't ever try to groove anything other than leather Because that will definitely ruin your blade. There's such a tiny little hole If they if you mess it up it, I, I Wouldn't know how to tell you to get it back sharp again other than buy a new blade for it Which most most stitch groovers you can buy new blades for even the one I have, I can buy new blades for it. I have a time or two. You know, I feel like that's just a really good universal tip, though, is just, you know, if you have leather tools, don't use them on other things. Because leather is soft and malleable, and it, it never really harms your tools. But other materials may not be so kind to your tools. Right. Like definitely don't try to stamp metal with your stamping tools. Like that's just not gonna be it's not gonna be happy. Unless you're you know, you don't mind ruining some. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Very <nice. laughs> You know, as far as stitch groovers, I knew a guy who used his swivel knife to uh, make a stitch groove with and it worked pretty well. If you make just a really light cut in it. Interesting. Know. Was he doing pretty fine stitching? Yeah. You you have to be right on the money with your stitching when you do that because the yeah. the cut is just a cut. It's not a groove, you know. And I've known people that use like a, a V gouge which oh, works man. too but it makes a pretty good size <laughs> right I mean you so can in with some sinew maybe yeah
Hmm? What's your favorite part about tooling? Oh, gosh, I don't know. <laughs> you have a specific I, I really enjoy tooling. I like to get done. <laughs> I like to see that's what it's going to look like when I'm all finished, you know. Fair and, enough, uh, fair that's where most people, they lose patience. Uh, you know, because they want to get done, so they, they skip a lot of steps. And I want to, and I do sometimes. No, but that's that's where you uh, fall short. Uh, we had a comment about stuff freezing, waiting till the spring to order because stuff freezing. Um, so we do have like hot packs, like uh, they are technically uh, like reptile warming packs that they use to ship reptiles. Um, just. Be really conscientious of when you order. So like for us here in Missouri, we really haven't seen a lot of cold like days that have been perpetual. We will get a couple days. Like this week has probably been the coldest that we've had so far. Otherwise, it'll be cold for maybe 24, 48 hours, and then we're warming back up to the 50s and 60s. Um, however, if you are north of us and you are experiencing um, cold weeks, what I would suggest of you is either call in your order and let them know, hey, it's been really cold. Please wait until, you know, ship my order on Monday. Like if you order on Wednesday or Thursday, can you say, please hold and wait and ship this on Monday? Because we are a couple days out. So, you know, it's not same day turnaround here. That way your order isn't necessarily sitting over a week. Um, especially with the holidays right now, you might want to wait till the holidays get over and some of that backlog in the shipping companies gets through um, and then order your chemicals. And once again, be like, hey, it's really cold where I am. Can you pull this order and ship it at the very beginning of the week? Because most places are, you know, at most a five day turnaround time, regular shipping. So that way it's not sitting somewhere over a weekend in a warehouse not moving and then we'll get frozen because the hot packs are only good for a couple days um so they're not going to keep it you know from freezing over a weekend of sitting yeah and this time of year during the holiday season yeah. you're taking a chance exactly exactly like if you can hold out and not order any of your water-based products until maybe like the second week of january like wait till things get through um a lot of times we'll try to do that here in-house. If we know that we're, we've been seeing a lot of freezing, we will look at orders and we'll say, okay, we need to hold these orders. We're not going to ship this on a Thursday or a Friday. We're going to send it out next Monday so that it's got the full week to get to you if you are, you know, in Wyoming or in Maine or North Dakota for you poor, sad people that live there. <laughs> or <Wow>. Minnesota. <laughs> I mean, you've got some really pretty country, but I am not a fan of the cold. I walk extra fast when I am outside when it's cold. I don't. I just don't go outside. Right? We know. Uh, yeah, so there is, I mean, there's definitely, so if you can avoid ordering, like if you're looking at the weather and you're like, man, next week I'm supposed to get a foot of snow and it's going to be in the, the teens and the 20s, maybe don't place your, your freezable chemical order that week. You know, maybe just hang tight for a minute. But also, keep in mind for your shops, if you do have a shop that is not weather controlled. Temperature controlled? Yeah. That too? That is an issue. So don't let your chemicals freeze. I know some people have just gotten uh, like a refrigerator that they don't necessarily turn on, but it's just kind of an insulator to kind of keep or keep them inside. Now your flammable chemicals, those aren't going to freeze because they're alcohol based. So, if, you know, if you've got... Thebean's regular dye or Angelus dye or even really your your alcohol based or your cements like yeah. those aren't going to be too affected by freezing weather. Obviously, I mean it's probably just a good idea just the chemicals yeah. in general don't let them freeze. Yeah, <laughs> like even even oil needs foot oil. You know it'll turn it to lard almost. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it difficult to use. Yeah. It doesn't spread real good. Yeah. So. Curious man said it's a spring like 17 Fahrenheit in central Minnesota. Ooh. Minnesota? Sounds awful. Somebody's talking about minus earlier. I don't remember where they were at. 
probably our Poland friends. Yep, cold. <laughs> <laughs> Dean said it's a dry cold. Yeah, I don't care what kind of cold it is. <laughs> sir. Cold, it's cold. It's cold. When your fingers and toes hurt, it's cold. I know people come here, and it's. I mean, we're not Texas or Florida, but it gets pretty humid here in Missouri, and we definitely experience a a wetter, stickier cold than a lot of places. Yeah, well, that's a, what I remember when I first moved here from Colorado. Uh, you know, in Colorado, it can be zero degrees, and uh, you can be outside in your shirt sleeve if you're doing something and, and feel pretty good, other than your fingers and toes. <laughs> but here, when it's 32 degrees, you better have a coat on. Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, just because of the humidity, I, I'd say. Yeah. Claudio says hello from sunny Peru. Ah, you oh, would. DJ said minus 30 at night with the wind. Wow. That's gross. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> Minus 30? Good gracious. I think, I mean, what's the lowest? What was it like 28 this morning, 25 this morning? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was decently cold. Yesterday afternoon, it, it got a little bit warmer. It wasn't too bad yesterday afternoon. The sun was out. Well, you know, when you live somewhere and you wake up every day and it's whatever it is, that's what you're used to. That's true. You know, so people that are living in a cold climate, you know, they're used, they don't necessarily feel good when they're freezing cold, but they're used to it. It's not, <laughs> it's like, it's not like a shock to them, you know. <laughs> it's just regular. Denny, I should have went and got me one of those 11 tools that we have and stamped this other strap you for you. Should've. I think I'm going to have to do this in the privacy of my own shop. Well, other. maybe what you can do is you can line this one and show them how to do that, and then yeah. you can do the other one. Yeah. Ugh. Well, no, I can't do that till after it's antiqued. Oh, sure. Yeah, I can. Yeah, okay. I can. I'll do that. Let's see. Now, Leticia, who was talking about stuff freezing on here, she's in northern Alberta. Oh. <laughs> she said for the next couple months it's going to be minus 20 Celsius, which is minus 4 Fahrenheit. Then right after that, they're like, oh, hey, uh, Tantos from Moscow says, my 20 Celsius here as well. Yeah, so I feel like you guys have a very narrow, narrow window of the year to get your uh, freezable chemicals in. So just stock up and then, <laughs> and then for the other nine months, just pray that you have enough. <laughs> <laughs> or just hibernate. Yeah, you don't need to work. It's yeah. fine. I go sleep. You don't I go need to eat for while my you're sleeping. <laughs> Fort Mac. That's where they're at. Dean says anybody get a catalog yet? Well, there's half a frog, but <laughs> I got a catalog on my desk. Big John laughing at everybody December from sunny Florida. From sunny Florida. Laughing at everybody. 70 degrees. Here? When? Here. Oh. Yes. Yeah. I know. Bomber. going to take a nice walk with the dogs, hopefully. In the winter, I really cherish are because we I mean here in Missouri just kind of rolls we'll have this little cold snap and then it'll get warm we'll have a cold snap and then it'll get warm but it's never just like perpetually freezing for months like we don't have that kind of weather so when we've got those little warm those little warm ticks I always just really I don't like try to take advantage of it as much as I can and walk the dogs for as long as I can <laughs> I'm not I'm not a fan of ticks no I mean I'm not a fan of <laughs> guys See what we have to deal with. Uh, okay. <laughs> the catalogs are, they sent out 5,000. 5,000 catalogs went out the other day. So, those of you that have been on the list since the beginning of time, mm -hmm. 
aka <laughs> like March of this year. Um, those should be arriving to you soon. But it is like the worst time to be shipping anything, so just keep that in mind that they might be a little bit slower with the media mail than uh, than at other times of the year. Uh, How's it going? My hands get tired. You want to take over? Yeah, I'll keep stamping. So Salvador didn't yeah. ask the question: Is it necessary to add blue tape specifically under the leather for tooling? I know you uh, don't use yeah, blue tape. Yeah, I I ordinarily would on this, but to. We're being so careful we don't need to today. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? That's right. <laughs> Normally you, you, you use clear packing tape, but... I use, yeah, I use packing tape. Uh, any kind of tape will work, whatever you're used to yeah, using. Yeah, don't, get, bit, don't you know. get that bit out of shape about the, uh, Scotch tape I probably wouldn't use. It's good. Yeah. It's kind of... What's yeah. the tape that wants to peel off when you're done is always nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, packing tape works really good unless you... Uh, have a hole in it or something and then when you go to peel it off it'll tear right there at that hole and mm -hmm. then you got to take it off in pieces and if you leave it on there for a long long time like two or three weeks and then try and peel it off it gets kind of brittle and hard to peel off yeah. but other than that just for for everyday use that's what I use and have really good luck with it because it does the job that I want it to do I know when we laser stuff, we use the blue, um, like, painter's tape for the top of the leather. Uh-huh. And I suppose you could probably also use that for the back. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that was the, the guy question. to ask. I think that's what he was using. Salvador said Gorilla Tape would pull the flesh side out. Yeah, so if you want your tooling on the back, put gr Gorilla Tape put grill tape on the back of it, tool the front, and then pull out that Gorilla Tape and just bring it all the way to the back. Just pull your tooling <laughs> to the backside. That's something strong. Yep. Yep, just regular packing tape is what I use. Oh, I forgot. You know they come with a, a nifty dispenser as well. Yeah. <laughs> so. I forgot to stick this in. Luckily the statue of limitations hadn't run out on this yet. You didn't have to reapply your glue. Yeah. Statute of limitations. Anybody watch the new Witcher and admire Henry uh, Cavill's new armor this year? Because I did, and I thought it was pretty snazzy. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, I always, I always like those medieval fantasy type shows because they usually have some pretty sweet leather work going on. That but, show's got some amazing costumes, anyway. I know her. Uh, the the blue. Oh, no, wrong show. <laughs> so the Wheel of Time also has come out, which is like another fantasy kind of show, and I'm getting like the two storylines and people mixed up a little bit in my head. But the, the blue chick from that one has got like this really sweet um, leather cowl almost that's got like these shoulder pads and everything, and it's just like this uh, like uh, collar that she wears, and it's cool. I want to... The rope dress? It's a... Uh... Oh, the, yeah, yeah, that one was really neat in the last season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll stop talking about fantasy TV. <laughs> um, yeah, those. Chad, have you watched The Wheel of Time? Uh, I will, not yet. Huh. You and your streaming rules. <laughs> All right. He has rules? He does. He has <laughs> rules. He will only have so many at a time, which I appreciate because it is expensive, but still makes it difficult for me to talk to him about shows. <laughs> <laughs> be 
spoil it. I know. Okay, yeah, I'm just going over this line that I did just. Did we go far enough, Denny? Yes, we did. Okay. I didn't know if I needed to do one no, more because, yeah, towards the top. This will go something like this. Perfect. All right. Yeah. I know, I sit there as I'm watching those shows and I'm just like, Chris, I want to make one of these things. Pause the show, pause the show, I need to take a screenshot. Right? <laughs> then I'll bring in a picture. Maybe we can design something. All right. Okay. Let's line this one so you know what we're doing. First off, I need to skive that in. Okay. I'll do that while I'm sitting down here. <laughs> You know, I'm glad to know that I'm not the only person that when skiving sometimes cuts off the end that you're going. Oh, yeah. And you know what? As long as it's covered up, you don't have yeah. to be too picky about it. <laughs> or maybe just cut a little bit extra long if you're going to have to skive that in just in case you cut a little off. Yeah, well, that's always kind of a given that I might <laughs> cut a little off, so I <laughs> take that into account. Okay. Now, we probably don't have any paper here, do we? Well, that's not a Perfect. Perfect. Sorry for all the noise. Where's the crinkles? cement this and after it's uh, cemented and stuck together I can trim it to size. Careful. Yeah. Because <laughs> I haven't put a finish on the front yet. What was for lunch today? I have a carrot soup that I made this weekend which is quite delicious. And I serve it over a um, a ball of rice with some cilantro. Well, then what do you want to have? <laughs> what am I going to have? Yeah, because I want to eat that. I think I'm having lasagna. My wife made lasagna last night. Mm. It was very good. Turkey lasagna. Mm. Is she trying to keep you fit there? Oh, she Denny? always does. A lean mean fighting machine? <laughs> yeah. Lean mean tooling machine. Yeah, it's oh. not working out so well. <laughs> That was the purpose, yes. <laughs> but then you just eat more, right? Yeah, I just... <laughs> <laughs> I take everything into account. <laughs> <laughs> I like turkey. Um, I made a really good, like, black bean and uh, sweet potato turkey chili. Oh, that sounds good. It is. It's pretty good. Uh, Angela says, so one layer of four to five, would you put a stiffener between your body and your liner? No. Nope. No. Nope. You don't want these to be real yeah, stiff. Yeah, you want it to be pretty pliable. You don't want it to be stretchy. The only part you want to be stretchy is that elastic in the back. We got people out there taking a tour. I can see them through the glass. Ooh. Jeff is giving a tour. You want me to well, and so, Denny, would you would you do this as like a single ply eight to nine ounce? You could. If you wanted to. You could. The no, back yeah. of the leather, though, especially the Herman Oak, is going to be pretty grippy. Yeah. And so it's it's not going to roll smoothly yeah. across. If you were going to use a, a single ply, it would definitely be good to uh, like put Toco Pro or Token on. Finish that or, back. Or gum drag on the back to pay, kind of paste that. Or down. I suppose you could use... Um, maybe like the 8 to 10 ounce bridle that has a finished pasted yeah. back on it. Yeah. If you weren't going to tool it sure. and you just wanted a single color something, you could use a bridle leather that's got a finished back so that it would move move for you. That yeah. Herman Oak, guys, if you, when you, like, it's got a really tight grain. Yeah. And it's a little scratchy. You know, the the leather itself, before they split it and make it into different weights, is is really soft on the back side. Yeah, because it's all nice but and loose and flaky. Yeah, when they split it, it's like the 
the fibers of that leather are sticking out, waiting to grab you. Yeah. It's almost like they're uh, like Velcro or like something. Magnetic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They split off all that that flinkiness that's on the inside of your skin, I suppose. So you know, <laughs> look at what's going on the inside. <laughs> I've never skied my skin to see what. No, what's going on under there? Yeah. Well, so we went up to the the Herman Oak Tannery a couple years ago, and we we uh, did some tours, and they show you the hides in the wet blue after they've got all the hair off of them, and they're all plump and thick, and this weird grayish. It's just not a very pleasant color that yeah. they are, um, and, and they'll let you touch it if if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Chris want did. To. He, he, you were there with us. Uh -huh. We took you and Jeff. That was a good time. Yeah. Um, and then we took him to the zoo. Oh, well, that was the best. <laughs> I've seen those pictures. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but no, that's get and then the the very back of the hides. So the the grain is really loose and and flinky on the back and that's why when you get saddle skirting you have a lot of that flinky loose grain is because you know when you're talking like unleveled skirting and you've got 20 ounce leather that hasn't really been touched or split it's got all that weird looseness on the back but then when you start splitting it down to weights you know all that goes away and you start getting into that inner core of the leather and it's nice and tight Herman Oak mm -hmm. tans and tight grained leather that's why it tools so well Uh, so Tim said he made, or TJ said he made a pair once with Herman Oak on the outside and then a three ounce Latigo liner on the inside. That would oh, be nice. good. That mm -hmm. would be good. Latigo, um, the worst part about the Latigo is it could possibly bleed a little bit color wise. Well, you know, if they're not your, yeah. your dress suspenders with your white shirt and you're just going to be wearing some good old plaid, then you'll probably be fine. Yeah, or just wear a red shirt. Or just wear a red shirt. <laughs> or a, a black shirt if it's uh, black. Let's see. Uh, TJ says, so we all know Liz's favorite color is green. Denny, what's your favorite color? <sighs> saddle tan. So, saddle tan. <laughs> I like, I love the color of burgundy latigo. I really do. Yeah. yeah. I think. I almost said burgundy. Yeah. yeah. Or mahogany. Yeah. It's a good one. I like blue. My favorite color is blue. Holly, you were also throwing it. Said, he said, the uh, and the girl in the background. Holly's the girl in the background. <laughs> What's your favorite color, Holly? My favorite color, um, I got a couple favorite colors, actually. Here's the left. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I like, honestly, I like the color black. I think it goes with everything, plus it's a nice accent. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I do black. like yellow. Stark difference, but, you know. Yellow and black? Yellow and black. Good she likes herself some bubble bees. Yeah. <laughs> black and yellow, black and yellow. <laughs> All right, Denny. So we've got this lined. We did line it with a piece of import instead of just Herman Oak, so yeah. that's why the color difference, you can see yeah. the color difference there. Yeah, you can line it with anything you want. An oil yeah. tan would be make a good liner or even a... Uh, a piece of upholstery if you yeah, wanted to. Yeah, upholstery leather would work. Yeah. The Venetian would be pretty nice. Probably something not super stretchy because yeah. that might be a little bit weird. Yeah. Well, All right. Depend on depend on this this outer part for your your strength. You yeah. Know? Then you can, like I think I cut this the liner out of a piece of belly. Probably. So, but it'll be plenty good. All right. So we're we'll, we lined that. We're gonna bevel and finish the edges. Denny's gonna do some antiquing and some. I guess what time? Uh, you're about an hour. Twelve fifteen. All right. Yeah. So we're gonna antique it. We're gonna make the other one. We're going to antique all the parts, and then you'll probably bring them in and sew them up. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we might antique them and stitch them up next okay. or Friday. Okay. Because I think we can do that in, in an hour or so. Oh, good. We have a lot of stuff to give away on Friday, though, Denny. Don't forget okay. about that. Okay. We do. Well, I, we'll, we'll talk about that between now and then okay. and see what I need to do. Um, a quick question Angela threw out. Did you guys already talk about the sizing or proportions of the front over the shoulder strap linked to the back, or is it mostly one size fits all with the elastic? Well, plastic? yeah, we did talk about that already. You might, uh, if you're making them for someone who is, I'm six feet tall and weigh 200 pounds plus. Okay. You know, so and these fit me pretty well. If you're doing it for someone that's... Uh, 
five foot two and weighs eighty seven pounds. Sure, you might want to make a, a little bit a solid. too big, probably. So we've got thirty two inches from tip to here. So the strap is thirty two. Um, he'll have five adjustment holes. The yes. center hole will be five inches from the tip, mm -hmm. um, and then he'll have two on either side. So it really it's pretty adjustable here. Yeah, it, you can you can either make it make this strap longer, or you can make your buckle shapes a bit longer if you want to. Sure. I wouldn't make them any shorter than this. Right, right. Because uh, you are, wherever this is going to buckle, you want them to come up still a little bit. Yeah. 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 Unless you're going to tool this, otherwise that is just going to show and it's going to be a little ugly. Yeah, these, and these fit me just perfectly. You know, they, they actually, the, the strap actually covers the whole buckle shape. Yeah. And then you've got, what was it, 10 inches of elastic? Yeah, 10 inches of elastic. And this... This is actually folded over down here. Yeah. So the elastic is folded over about an inch on this end, and then it's just housed in here. So yeah. the amount of elastic we have showing is five inches. Yeah. So we've got five inches of elastic. It was a 10 inch piece. So after we housed everything in there, we had five inches yeah. left. But but from the bottom of, of this little medallion and back to, to the fold over, it's actually eight inches. Yeah, it's eight inches there. Yeah. And that's that's a pretty good distance. If you get much longer than that, you're going to be up towards the shoulder blades a little bit too far, yep. I think. You know, if, if they were a real small pair for a real small person, you could make them a bit shorter. Than you that. want this to fall in the middle of your back? Yeah. Uh, so this one, yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty center yeah. of the back. Yeah. So measure... Let's see here. You know what? We'll do this on Friday. Once we get it done, we'll put it on Denny and we can kind of do some measurements on him. Yeah. And then you'll have kind of like if you have your person and you're measuring them for their suspenders, we'll give you some tips yeah. about sizing and measuring. We'll do yeah. that on Friday. I, you know, but the size that, that this pattern is, is pretty universal. You can fit most people with the size that we've got right here. For your Pretty average good. Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Average You're Joe. six six foot average Joe. Maybe a little bit taller, because it looks like you wear them in the the third or the fourth hole. Yeah. So then you got a couple holes left. Yeah. So you could be six foot three and yeah. it'd be fine. And it depends on if you wear low rise pants or high rise pants yeah. or whatever, you know, there's so many <laughs> <laughs> We have officially gone down. Uh, <laughs> A uh, rabbit hole is correct. <laughs> the yeah. sizing hole. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we will be back on Friday. Um, everybody, make sure that you tune in. We will have a lot of fun giveaways on Friday after we finish up the suspenders. Um, so it'll be good chances for people watching. We don't, we're not sure how we're going to give stuff away yet, but we're going to give some stuff away. So we'll probably have, I don't know, five to ten items that we'll give away once we come up with everything. Um, and then tomorrow, Tony and I will be back with our live sale so two o'clock on facebook join us for an hour of 20 spectacular items that we have spe you know i switched words there in the middle yeah all right we'll see you guys later have a good one Bye.